And we're currently running a course called How to Teach Computing um, on the European School Net Academy. And Julia is a contributor to that course, one of the instructors. Um, so it's a great pleasure to have her today actually presenting live in this webinar to uh, everybody. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I, I really hope you're going to enjoy this webinar. Um, I think really from, for me, one of the key messages that Tulia has brought to the course um, and in the videos that she's presenting on the course is that we shouldn't really teach educational robotics or robotics in our classrooms because students need to know about robots. It's much more about the kind of skills and competencies <clears throat> that students acquire when working with robots such as collaboration, such as learning to um, express themselves in technical terms, um, such as um, a sense of entrepreneurship, these kind of elements, which I think came out very strongly in Tulia's presentation on the course. And I'm quite sure, Tulia, that you will pick up on some of this today, um, so that even those participants who are here tonight, um, and who aren't a member of the course, um, can, can learn about these things. So um, I'll leave it at that, and uh, I would highly encourage everybody here on the webinar to um, ask questions. Um, this is a unique opportunity to ask questions to Julia, who's such an experienced educator in this field. And um, yeah, that's it. Enjoy. And, um, yeah, all the best. So thank you, Ben. Thank you, Anya. OK, uh, I hope that I will be clear enough. My English is uh, so bad, I realized with the video. I hope that uh, all of you who uh, joined the, the academy could uh, understand my English. You know, Italians are not so, so good, but uh, I think that one of uh, the great uh, uh, things that we learned uh, here is that also uh, learning languages is a skill that we need if we want to learn from each other. So, uh, Today, I want to just to, to share my experience. Uh, maybe there is someone uh, between you that is uh, much more experienced than me. Uh, anyway, uh, it's, uh, I'm Tulia Urshit. I'm a math and science teacher in a junior secondary school in Italy, in near Verona. I uh, started using uh, uh, educational robotics uh, and uh, I found it uh, uh, really uh, satisfying and uh, uh, involving my students. And I became, uh, you see, in the picture that uh, I'm sharing with you now, uh, this is a picture from one of my students. Uh, it represents uh, my work in the vertical curriculum. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, even if I'm a, a teacher uh, of math and science in the junior secondary school, so it is, uh, it is from 11 to 14 years old. I have uh, some lessons uh, in the kindergarten, in the primary school, uh, and uh, we put educational robotics uh, uh, as uh, uh, an added offer in our Piano dell'Offerta Formativa, that is the document uh, in which uh, we uh, express uh, the offer to all students. And uh, in, this, uh, in this picture, you can see that uh, I work with the Lego Mindstorms, uh, with the Lego Widow. Uh, you don't see the scratch, but uh, uh, the B-Bot. Uh, anyway, uh, we try all the things, uh, all the stuff that uh, we, can, uh, we can do. So uh, let me go on. Okay, uh, we can start with uh, some uh, something interactive. I hope uh, uh, to uh, to be uh, good enough uh, to uh, manage with all uh, the, the things that I prepared. So here you can uh, uh, join uh, the poll with uh, your mobile if you want uh, with a QR code or uh, uh, going uh, to that link. I put it also in the chat if someone uh, uh, if someone prefers uh, to just copy and paste, uh, I'm going through that. So please, uh, you can use both uh, uh, the link or uh, the, the QR code. And uh, please, uh, uh, we can start uh, with uh, this poll. Uh, just one moment. Uh, okay. And now, uh, 
uh, away. Uh, please, everyone, uh, uh, answer to this poll just to understand uh, how many of you uh, are you. in uh, education or robotics and have any experience uh, in using coding. You can wait a uh, few minutes. Uh, Till uh, uh, most of you answer to to this question. So it seems that uh, many of you uh, are quite new uh, on educational robotics, and uh, this is something that uh, I saw uh, at least between my colleagues. Uh, uh, make uh, uh, teachers uncomfortable with the starting new things because uh, they change the role uh, not uh, so confident uh, at the workshop with the robots and some, someone is writing never use educational robotics never uh, Okay. 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 Uh, I stop for a, a minute, then we will uh, be back as soon as uh, everyone uh, has voted. Budget, uh, tablet doesn't allow answer. Uh, you can also work uh, with your mobile if the tablet, if you are using the tablet with the uh, WebEx. Uh, Arduino is uh, different from Lego, yes, but it, uh, it's uh, anyway uh, uh, a robot okay, we can use for robotics. Uh. Okay. There are also some people uh, with uh, great experience, we see. Okay. Okay, uh, so it seems that uh, not, uh, 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 not all of you are uh, new, uh, completely new with, uh, with robots. Uh, Okay, uh, why to use uh, educational robotics uh, in the school, in school? Of course, robots are uh, linked with games and uh, uh, students love them because it's something that uh, they know. Uh, usually, uh, when we start working with uh, educational robotics, uh, it's not necessary to make students understand what we mean with uh, robots because uh, in uh, uh, their uh, thinking, robots are those things that they see in uh, uh, movies, uh, and some uh, a kind of uh, humanoids, uh, androids, uh, and uh, they are uh, machines, uh, and uh, uh, they are not sure what they are. And uh, uh, boys usually uh, play with uh, Lego robots, uh, or with Lego anyway, but uh, girls are less confident uh, with them. And uh, uh, so uh, here you can see some uh, pictures of uh, some kind of uh, um, tools that we can use in the class. On the left, uh, you can see the Lego uh, we do. Uh, in the middle, uh, there is a drawing from uh, some students in the kindergarten who saw for the first time uh, the Lego uh, Mindstorm uh, that are in the picture on the right. And uh, uh, using robots is completely different uh, of just using uh, software. So I use very much also Scratch. Scratch programming is uh, very powerful. 
but uh, uh, the the power of, uh, of uh, real tools like uh, uh, the real robots or uh, the uh, Lego we do uh, is that uh, uh, students can immediately understand uh, what are the effects of uh, their uh, their work with uh, the, the program and uh, uh, they can understand uh, if they do uh, if they do some mistakes and uh, um, what is uh, really nice is that uh, it's not like when uh, working with a test in which you have bad marks but uh, a mistake is just the starting point for uh, some uh, uh, for a new way of uh, uh, solving a problem. And uh, of course, uh, if you use uh, robots uh, inside the, the curriculum, uh, it becomes uh, easier to, uh, to teach uh, uh, different subjects, uh, not only uh, STEM subjects, uh, even if STEM subjects are, of course, uh, uh, those that are um, much more easier to, to be teach. Um, what I wanted to um, to tell is that uh, technology is, uh, of course, maybe you saw also in the academy for uh, all of you who took part. Technology is something that can involve uh, students, children, but uh, it's just one part uh, of uh, all the, the learning process because uh, uh, students are very confident with the technology. Uh, sometimes you can see people also at the restaurant uh, uh, playing games with their tablet or with their console. Uh, but uh, even if we call them uh, uh, digital natives, they are not so... Uh, good uh, in uh, working properly. So we needed to put uh, uh, technology together with the uh, contents uh, and also with the uh, methodology. So we speak about educational robotics uh, and uh, not just uh, about robotics. Uh, what I felt uh, speaking with other colleagues uh, also from uh, abroad uh, is that uh, robotics uh, is a uh, um, very used in uh, some countries, but uh, educational robotics uh, is quite new because uh, um, usually robotics uh, is uh, uh, considered as a, a subject to be taught uh, in uh, professional schools uh, in uh, as a, uh, a way to teach technology. But educational robotics uh, is uh, more is a way to uh, to let the students and children to guide the discovery. Uh, to problem solving, and uh, also what is very important uh, uh, to learn uh, in a cooperative way. Uh, little children, uh, especially from the primary school, uh, are not so happy to share with the others uh, uh, their work. Uh, at the beginning, it's uh, quite difficult to work in groups, and uh, through robotics, they learn that they have to share because uh, the results are much more better when uh, they, they share. And uh, um, what they, uh, it's very important also to, to share the work because what they learn from uh, each other, uh, grow their own competencies, uh, not only uh, when they have something uh, uh, taught by the, the teacher. Uh, but why robotics? Uh, here I found uh, uh, a very nice picture uh, from the eSkills uh, report. Uh, I suggest uh, uh, you to uh, to take a look at this report uh, because uh, many times when uh, we teach, uh, we are focused just on content. Uh, but uh, if we uh, take a look at what is happening, we understand uh, in which way we have to uh, to change our methodologies because uh, nowadays, for instance. Uh, the, the, the demand of uh, um, STEM professionals, and here it's written ICT, but STEM professionals anyway, is much uh, more uh, high than uh, the number that we actually have. And uh, in the future, you see uh, they forecast uh, to 2020. Uh, in the future, uh, there will be a lack of uh, professionals in STEM. Uh, in STEM. Uh, so. First of all, we need to uh, to give our students those competencies that they can uh, um, use for uh, um, choosing their path. And uh, uh, nowadays, we are not uh, we cannot uh, uh, imagine which kind of work uh, there will be in next uh, 
10 years, maybe five years. So um, we cannot give them just content, but we have to give them uh, those uh, competencies that uh, uh, help them uh, to, to satisfy uh, any kind of uh, need that they will uh, find in their way. So robot, uh, robots can help uh, in doing this uh, because uh, they are they call them learning mediators. They are physical tools they uh, you can uh, use uh, to uh, invent stories, uh, to create, uh, uh, to grow creativity. Uh, to develop new skills. Uh, I use uh, education robotics uh, not uh, in clubs, uh, even if uh, we are some clubs, but uh, especially inside my teaching. And uh, as the time uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is short, uh, uh, from when I started working with the robots, uh, I had to rethink all the curriculum because uh, I need to uh, to do the same things uh, in a shorter time, but uh, in a more effective uh, way. Uh, so uh, when you work with uh, uh, educational robotics, you have to rethink uh, uh, also to spaces, to way of uh, teaching, and to using uh, uh, other kind of tools like uh, Edmodo, for instance. Uh, so to to build uh, some uh, kind of uh, uh, digital classes in which uh, students can share their work. Uh, or they can meet. Uh, here you see that uh, uh, students, when working with robots, uh, are very happy to share uh, each other. And uh, um, this is uh, because uh, educational robotics uh, is very, very useful, first of all, to involve students uh, in uh, STEM subjects. Then uh, working with robots uh, can stimulate motivation. Uh, of course, when I speak about robots, uh, I mean all kinds uh, uh, of robots, uh, not just uh, Lego robots. Uh, my experience is more linked with uh, Mindstorms, and uh, uh, for many of you, maybe it's the same, but uh, uh, it can be also Arduino or uh, uh, Raspberry Pi, or uh, um, it, it depends also on the age. Of course, uh, with younger, it's easier working uh, with uh, uh, Lego We Do or Bebot, uh, and uh, uh, not going to Arduino. So educational robotics, I was telling, is uh, good also to develop key competencies. Is a, uh, it's very nice because uh, um, working with robots uh, can. Uh, mm, uh, do you know uh, what is serendipity? Uh, sometimes you want to to have a, a kind of lesson, and uh, you discover that uh, you uh, you can grow, you can stimulate many other things. Uh, um, not only competencies, but also uh, different uh, uh, behaviors in the class. It's uh, very nice. Also, uh, educational robotics is very good to reduce gender gaps. Uh, um, to know which range of age uh, you work with the robots. Uh, my students are from 11 to 14, uh, usually, but uh, I have uh, uh, two hours a week in the primary school, so from the first to the fifth grade. And uh, I have uh, one hour a week in the kindergarten uh, with uh, five years old uh, children. Uh, this is uh, something that we are uh, experiencing to, to, to see if uh, uh, starting to, um, to expose students uh, to STEM subjects, robotics, can uh, give them uh, more uh, more skills uh, when they arrive uh, in the uh, in the junior secondary school. And uh, girls uh, girls are very very happy working with robots, uh, but because they are really very creative. But uh, I don't have a picture here. But uh, I would like to uh, to tell you that uh, they are um, very good in the bagging. Uh, so in founding mistakes uh, in, uh, when they, they prepare a program, but they are very bad in building robots. Uh, they are they found uh, they find a lot of difficulties in uh, uh, build uh, in a proper way a robot, uh, even if uh, they have uh, some uh, uh, pictures uh, that some tutorials. And I think that this is because uh, uh, in their games uh, when they're young. Uh, they are not so used uh, uh, to work with robots uh, uh, like uh, boys. 
Uh, and this is something uh, I think a, a cultural. Uh, I uh, I gave a, a Lego uh, to my girls. I have two daughters uh, since they they were very young. But in many cases, uh, as uh, at least uh, in my experience with uh, the girls that I have at school, uh, they told me that uh, uh, for many of them uh, is uh, uh, they are not used to to work uh, to play games with the Lego. So uh, the, um, uh, they don't break things. <laughs> no, they don't break, but uh, uh, they are not uh, very precise. They are very good in studying. They are very good uh, in uh, uh, problem solving, but they, they are not very good uh, in uh, manual skills, uh, at least not in building robots. Um, but after some uh, some while, they become uh, better. So because of uh, this, um, how can I say, uh, these difficulties, uh, we use to have uh, mixed groups in which uh, uh, boys can help uh, in uh, learning how to build and to be engineer, I can say. And uh, girls uh, uh, can give a, a lot of tips in uh, learning how to be uh, very precise in programming. So education robotics is also very good in sharing experience with other schools. We have a lot of uh, uh, video conferences or works with other schools, uh, also from abroad, using the interactive whiteboard. So education robotics is a, a way to connect with, the, with others. Uh, on next uh, Saturday, uh, it will be uh, Scratch Day, and uh, we are going to have a um, uh, an, uh, an event, interactive event. So, if some uh, uh, of you at the end uh, is uh, curious to to join us, uh, is uh, more than welcome. I will uh, share the link. Then I was telling that uh, what is perfect is that robots are very good in developing key competencies. Uh, so, first of all, we have to to uh, to understand each other uh, and. Uh, uh, understand what we intend with the key competence. Uh, that is a, a, um, uh, a complex of uh, knowledge, skills, and attitudes. So uh, books are not enough to, to develop those uh, competencies. The skills that uh, we can grow with the exercise are very good. But uh, with robots, uh, we can uh, develop uh, all those competencies that uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we see that the uh, are for the 20th century uh, citizens. Uh, should we have uh, ethical issues, some, uh, someone uh, asked. Uh, of course, uh, one important part of uh, uh, the, the work I have with students as we work with uh, robots is to speak about the roboetics because, uh, and this is uh, another way to understand uh, uh, that uh, robotics uh, is not just related with STEM subjects. Um, Roboetics, uh, that is, uh, uh, is very active because uh, uh, nowadays uh, uh, robotics uh, is, uh, uh, is growing uh, a lot in uh, not only um, in uh, weapons but also for, uh, um, for disabled people, uh, for uh, buildings, for uh, uh, industries. And uh, they have to understand that uh, maybe in the future uh, some of them could be become engineer and uh, program some robots. So the ethical part uh, is very important uh, uh, to uh, to take in consideration. I teach in high secondary school and tried this year uh, to teach robotics just with Lego, and students uh, were very interested. Sometimes uh, we also have problems with time, so we ask uh, uh, older students uh, to become tutor of the younger. So uh, students from uh, the high school go in the primary school, and uh, vice versa, uh, they have to learn how to explain to youngsters. Uh, so it becomes very good also uh, to develop uh, uh, the language competencies uh, to the uh, that are linked uh, with the communication in the mother language. Uh, then uh, working with robots, uh, what is uh, really, really nice uh, is that they 
not only the digital competence, but they learning. Uh, they are able to learn what they are learning. So it's a kind of a uh, metacognition. Uh, each time we do something, they understand what they they were able to to realize. Uh, not only, uh, also teaching mathematics uh, can be very different when uh, you work with education and robotics because you don't have uh, just to give them uh, procedures, but uh, you have uh, to uh, to give a problem, and uh, they understand that uh, there are different ways uh, to solve some problems. Uh, I was uh, in uh, uh, in the primary school last week in uh, uh, the second class, so students. Uh, uh, seven years old, and uh, we were speaking uh, about uh, the procedure to make a Lego robot, uh, a Lego Mindstorm robot, uh, moving in a square. And uh, uh, their teacher uh, was telling me, uh, Tulia, we didn't start it with geometry in the second, uh, in second class of the primary school, uh, so they cannot uh, understand how to build a, a square, how to, to make the robot uh, uh, going on a square. But uh, uh, children were able to do it uh, anyway, so uh, you can uh, change the way in which uh, you uh, you go and uh, give uh, uh, your lessons. Uh, what is very good is that uh, robotics is not only for uh, gifted students, it's not only for talented students, but it's very good uh, to uh, for inclusion. Uh, you know, at least in Italy, as we work with uh, uh, mixed class, uh, classes, we have uh, uh, special students uh, together with uh, normal students, uh, gifted students, uh, students with uh, uh, some learning difficulties. Uh, uh, dyslexia uh, is uh, very common, but also uh, we have a lot of immigrants in Italy, uh, uh, people uh, with uh, difficulties in language, uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, students uh, uh, very uh, active, uh, sometimes uh, also with the uh, diagnosis of uh, uh, ADHD. And uh, working with robots, uh, we are very, uh, very happy because uh, we can, uh, uh, we can in uh, integrate uh, all of them. And not only integrating, but also uh, making them uh, work in uh, in a very proper way. You know, uh, there was a gardener who spoke about a different kind of intelligences and working with robotics, uh, you can grow uh, many of them. So develop competencies uh, uh, through different ways uh, of, uh, uh, of approaching. Uh, so it's very nice uh, seeing uh, some students that usually are uh, just in a corner uh, taking uh, uh, important positions and sharing their uh, opinion about uh, what they are doing. What uh, uh, is uh, normal to, to, to do when you are working with uh, educational robotics uh, is that uh, you have to rethink spaces. Of course, uh, if you wanted to make uh, robots moving, uh, in the kindergarten it is uh, quite easy because you have, a many, uh, you have big spaces. <laughs> Uh, in our classes in Italy, uh, we have a traditional, in many classes, we have traditional uh, uh, solutions with desk in front of the teacher, who is uh, the chief, and uh, uh, it's not possible to work with uh, educational robotics in, in this way. So uh, we, uh, we tried to rethink spaces. Uh, the future classroom lab uh, is perfect, uh, and uh, even if uh, we don't have a funds, because uh, uh, is, uh, uh, I think, a problem of many countries in Europe. Uh, we just started with uh, simple things, uh, making uh, uh, some uh, groups, uh, idols, uh, or sometimes going uh, in the gym or uh, in the corridor. Uh, it doesn't matter, but uh, uh, what is important is that uh, I always wear uh, trousers because uh, I uh, stay in the ground uh, you know, on the, the floor with my students. Uh, uh, we uh, changed also the, the way in which we interact uh, because uh, uh, I became just a, uh, a coach and I learned many things from them. Of course, uh, it's uh, hard for those of you uh, are afraid of, uh, uh, of uh, students who speak uh, uh, loud or move. We don't have uh, many soldiers, but uh, uh, we have uh, uh, 
uh, of course, to, to to change all the way uh, the ways in which we we work. Uh, I have a lot of questions here, and uh, uh, just one moment that I see because uh, otherwise I I skip some of them. Uh, some of you uh, says that uh, you don't have funds. Uh, of course, uh, we are in the same situation. Uh, we got uh, uh, some funds from uh, some uh, projects. Uh, what I learned is uh, when you work with robots, uh, you have to share. If you share, uh, you become, um, uh, to share, I mean, uh, it's to documentate what you are doing. Uh, if you do it this way, you can go and ask uh, some company, some industry to, uh, for some help. Uh, I was an uh, ingenious uh, pilot teacher for, uh, for less than three years. Uh, and I learned uh, a lot of things uh, from uh, from uh, that project uh, because uh, I understood that uh, uh, you can uh, work uh, very well uh, with companies, not only asking money, but uh, asking uh, for uh, uh, resources, good resources, for tips. Uh, but also, uh, you if you um, you can take uh, some advantages, but you can also give them some advantages. For instance, uh, in our uh, in our camps, in our village, uh, it can happen that uh, some students uh, can uh, uh, can uh, uh, ask uh, to work uh, and to stay in the, the industries uh, around. Uh, what would be nice is uh, uh, copying uh, some uh, some examples like. Uh, in uh, in Finland, uh, w the Nokia was a great example. Uh, talented students uh, had some lessons uh, in uh, uh, at the Nokia laboratories, and uh, they uh, they learned uh, um, a job while uh, studying. Uh, but uh, in Italy, at least, uh, it's not so easy. Uh, so uh, I see also that some of you uh, uh, use uh, competitions. Uh, there are many competitions uh, related with uh, uh, educational robotics, uh, usually for uh, uh, older students, uh, not in the primary and the kindergarten. Uh, there is the RoboCup, the first Lego League. Uh, first Lego League was also linked with the Ingenious. Uh, I'm not very fond uh, of a competition, but this is my personal position, uh, because uh, uh, I think that uh, at least in the primary school, uh, we have uh, to promote uh, all kinds of intelligences, uh, all uh, students, uh, and the uh, competitions uh, are also only for uh, uh, gifted students. So I think that uh, we can uh, take part to competitions, but uh, uh, working with some clubs uh, in the afternoon, for instance, but uh, while having uh, normal lessons, uh, we have to give uh, all students uh, the same opportunities uh, to learn. And uh, uh, as I told you, uh, our classes are uh, made of uh, many kinds of students. Uh, if uh, I, I have some competition, I have to left behind some students. And uh, uh, in, my, in my case, I prefer to, to work the, uh, in a different way. Uh, competitions, of course, are very, very uh, strong, uh, give a strong motivation to, to kids. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that they are uh, much more good when uh, they are in the high school than in the primary school. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I prefer uh, in the competition those competitions in which you put also the scientific uh, um, work and not only the, the technological work, like uh, uh, for in first Lego League, in which you have to uh, prepare also a project. In that case, uh, um, we can uh, um, we can develop much more competencies. Uh, Arduino is uh, very nice because it's very cheap. Uh, but uh, Arduino is, uh, uh, I think, is uh, for uh, older students, uh, or at least uh, you have to use uh, uh, parts like uh, Raspberry Pi and. Uh, uh, prepared uh, things uh, um, because uh, it's not easy to speak about electronics uh, with students. I don't know if you can see. Here I have. Uh, I tried uh, to to make them working, but uh, while uh, having the web access is uh, difficult. Here I have uh, an onion. Uh, I have a uh, maki maki, and I have also 
let me see if I am able to speak. Can you imagine what is it? This is a tortellino, and uh, this is our board. This is something similar to Arduino. This is a Mackey Mackey, and uh, we can uh, uh, make uh, some uh, pasta or uh, some uh, onions uh, singing. Uh, in this way, uh, we use a cheap uh, instrument because uh, Mackey Mackey is uh, very cheap, and uh, we can use uh, like a board or uh, uh, some other things that we use a very cheap uh, uh, um, okay Lego we do Lego we do to teach physics uh, maybe you know it uh, Arduino is not that difficult but uh, uh, is uh, uh, good to work with technology in my opinion at least but uh, I'm happy if some of you uh, can uh, give me some tips that work uh, in a different way uh, but um, uh, it's not. Uh, if you wanted to uh, to make students uh, working with the problem solving, you have to give them something that they are able uh, to manipulate uh, and uh, um, and do it them, themselves. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the kind of a uh, um, tool that we can use are different if we work in, in the kindergarten uh, or if you work in the primary or the secondary school. Uh, in the kindergarten, uh, it's good uh, uh, making some unplugged activities or working uh, with the uh, Lego We Do. Uh, for instance, uh, we can uh, uh, take uh, the Lego We Do and uh, use the environment uh, to, in the picture you can uh, see, uh, one of my lessons, uh, in which uh, I ask the students uh, to uh, speak about uh, the, uh, the environment in which the crocodile live. And uh, we had to move the crocodile to find what uh, uh, he was uh, eat was uh, eating. Uh, maybe you saw in uh, in the video. And uh, it was a one month of work. Uh, uh, it was very nice. Here in the in this picture, you can see also about uh, the um, uh, some competencies that we can grow uh, just with unplugged activities. Uh, or they are some orientation activities, uh, psychomotricity uh, activities. Uh, sorry, but uh, here they are uh, not able to speak and uh, to, to read at uh, the same time. Uh, I will stop just to, to see if there is uh, some question. Uh, Julia, if I can interrupt you, you can uh, leave the questions uh, at the yeah, end. Yeah, Don't yeah. worry about them right now. Just go ahead okay. with your presentation. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, so I was telling that uh, uh, some unplugged activities are very good in the, the kindergarten. Here, for instance, uh, we are working uh, uh, on uh, psychomotricity. Uh, students and uh, with the quantity, uh, one uh, nice... Uh, uh, a thing that happened to me uh, some weeks ago was uh, in this uh, in this game in which I asked students uh, uh, what is uh, the color which has uh, the uh, big, uh, the bigger number of shapes and uh, one little girl uh, asked, told me uh, teacher you are uh, you are making us a wrong question and they said a wrong question. Uh, and she said, uh, yes, because there are no uh, colors which have uh, uh, the, the bigger number of uh, shapes. And uh, uh, this was impressive because uh, sometimes in the junior secondary school in which uh, I usually work, uh, my students are not uh, so, uh, they don't pay so, so big attention in these particulars. Uh, so it means that uh, if we start uh, from uh, early ages uh, uh, growing such kind of competencies that maybe uh, are already in uh, kids uh, when they are uh, young, but uh, they lose uh, somehow uh, by the way, uh, maybe we can change uh, the, the situation and uh, uh, have a better results. Uh, from uh, the unplugged activities, then we move uh, to some uh, uh, digital uh, uh, activities because uh, we wanted to give uh, different uh, ways uh, um, to use the tablets uh, or to, to play games. Uh, you see the B-Bot is uh, marvelous. This is very cheap, uh, robots indeed, and uh, very powerful in the kindergarten. Uh, students are able, something happened. 
I lost uh, the whiteboard. Uh, Anya, some, uh, is it you? Uh, my my presentation is uh, hidden somewhere. Doesn't matter. Maybe someone uh, switch to. Oh, okay, thank you. Sure. <laughs> Okay, uh, I was telling that uh, the Bibot uh, is very good because uh, uh, you can uh, go from the unplugged activities uh, uh, to uh, digital activities. This is the Bibot, the, the, the yellow B uh, on the right. Uh, and then <laughs> I don't know who is uh, <laughs> one uh, from a whiteboard to presentation. Uh, please leave me the presentation because otherwise, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, and here in the tablet, you can see Steph Junior, and that is a really powerful uh, uh, for young students. Uh, it was uh, presented uh, last August, and uh, at the beginning, it uh, worked only on the iPad, but now, since uh, one month, uh, it works also in uh, uh, Android, so the tablets. And uh, what is very new uh, since the uh, last 15 days, uh, you can also share the projects uh, uh, through email. And this is uh, uh, very nice because uh, uh, children like very much uh, sharing with parents uh, uh, their work. Um, Anya, something happened. I'm not able uh, to, to go on with the slides. Maybe you can help me or maybe someone uh, uh, took the... Um, Anya? Anya? Hello, hello? You need to um, take back the presenter rights. Okay, uh, okay, now it works, but maybe someone uh, took the... Okay. Yeah, we have too many people to, to, to coordinate it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so here you can see, uh, working with the Sketch Junior, we can switch from uh, the hands-on activity to the digital one. And children are uh, very happy to, um, to switch to, the, uh, to a different use of uh, the, uh, of the, uh, the digital materials. So they become makers instead of uh, just consumers. They don't uh, uh, use just uh, games, but they create their own games. And they are very, very quick in doing that. Uh, also, a uh, scratch, uh, of, uh, here is a picture from uh, the, the kindergarten, and uh, uh, they are very happy to work with scratch, but uh, if it's a scratch junior, they are really uh, autonomous. You don't need to, to give them some uh, tips. Uh, when I work with scratch, I, of course, uh, you can develop a lot of uh, uh, mathematical tools, uh, STEM, uh, uh, skills uh, and uh, other kind of skill, uh, skills, but uh, it's very nice when you can uh, join the uh, also the creativity like here, and uh, you can have the dance of bees. Uh, if uh, students grow older, you have uh, to to think to something more and uh, give also geometrical uh, tips. Uh, Scratch is very good, but if you can link uh, Scratch uh, with uh, uh, with Woo, for instance, or with uh, other kind, uh, like Mickey Mickey, other kind of tools, it's very powerful because immediately the effect of the actions. Here you you can see some examples, and here just uh, to uh, to finish, uh, there is. Uh, uh, an example of working uh, with the special students inside the class. Uh, we started with uh, the materials from uh, code.org. There is also an Italian uh, site, uh, Programma Futuro, that now uh, introduces uh, uh, coding inside the, the, the curriculum in the primary school. And uh, uh, in coding, uh, you can find some activities uh, with Blockly, very easy to be used from students also not able uh, uh, to speak or just able to use uh, special instruments. Uh, but then uh, uh, we had some experience through Scientix. Uh, Herman that I see here uh, was uh, one of the, um, the best uh, um, 
helper because I'm just my my degree is not in uh, technology. I'm a for, my degree is in forestry sciences, and uh, we can give a help also. So uh, the competencies that we grow are also uh, about uh, entrepreneurship and uh, social skills. Uh, there are some examples here uh, how to integrate uh, uh, Lego We Do. And uh, what I really suggest you to download it to read them uh, is go to the uh, You can find many links to all the the things that we mentioned uh, and more Coder Dojo, Think Arcade, the thing, uh, all of the, the, the stuff you, that you can find. Because I think that. Uh, uh, we can speak about uh, one tool instead of another because our experience uh, uh, cannot uh, take all of them. But there are many, many uh, tools that are very useful. So now, <laughs> if you have some questions, I uh, I see that there are a lot of things uh, that you wrote in the chat, and I passed uh, very quick. Yes, maybe it's the idea that you will uh, go over the questions and see if uh, there is any question which was not answered yet. Yeah? Okay. Uh -huh. So, uh, was I uh, clear? Did you understand what I said? Arduino is very different from Lego. Scratch project, uh, uh, this one is brilliant. Uh, there are many, also many uh, new robots that you can find uh, uh, nowadays. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, sometimes the problem is the price, and uh, it's difficult to introduce robotics. Uh, it's difficult. Uh, the biggest problem is about the funds. Uh, I was suggesting you that at the beginning, here, uh, also in my classes, we had some difficulties. Uh, but uh, working with some projects, uh, you can start uh, just with one robot. Uh, the uh, the best thing would be to have uh, one robot, uh, if we speak about Mindstorm, uh, each two or three students. Uh, but if you don't have uh, money, you can start just with one. One is better than nothing. And then uh, uh, share what you do and ask for some more, and maybe uh, step by step uh, grow uh, the whole, uh, uh, the whole pack uh, for the class. Uh, my students, uh, we know our students uh, love programming. Uh, more visual and concrete uh, helps. Uh, okay, uh, if uh, you want, uh, if you pass uh, through the, the presentation, I gave you some links. Uh, I worked with uh, some colleagues here in Italy. And uh, uh, there is a, a little uh, ebook, uh, a free ebook, uh, and just uh, uh, two chapters uh, with some examples uh, of working uh, with uh, uh, Lego We Do and uh, Scratch. Uh, because many colleagues uh, would be uh, happy to, to work with educational robotics, but they are afraid that they don't know how to start. So you will uh, find the link uh, through the presentation. Let me see. Here yeah, I put in. You have to to. I work with. Uh, oh, okay. I'm not able uh, to say it's a uh, Lego um, scratch. The name is. Uh, we do for. Let me write here. Scratch for window. Unfortunately, it works only uh, on the iPad at the moment, but uh, uh, there are some some tips that you can uh, use for, for it. Hydrobot, there are very nice things that you can find. If you download that uh, toolkit from uh, the eSkills materials from last uh, year, uh, you find a lot of ideas uh, and materials. Also, uh, uh, working uh, inside Ingenious, I had uh, many uh, ideas uh, with uh, people from Spain, Spain, and also with uh, from uh, the um, uh, the South America. They work a lot with uh, robots, uh, uh, also to uh, grow competencies uh, with uh, uh, mamas, they call uh, in the afternoon with uh, women that uh, are just to, to take to care, take care to. Their children. 
scratch a very low level. I started using scratch uh, not many years ago. Uh, it was about uh, uh, four or five years ago. Uh, because uh, of uh, ingenious especially, I just started. And uh, I saw that uh, the best way to start is uh, to, to um, go through the, the website. There are many tutorials and uh, share, uh, take the, some ideas and then uh, remix them. I give you here uh, just uh, one idea if some of you uh, is happy to join us. We organized uh, for a uh, next Saturday, uh, uh, a stretch event in which uh, we are uh, having a, a, set, a workshop in our school, and uh, we open uh, through the Intrati whiteboard uh, our class uh, to other classes in Italy, and uh, they are very uh, we are very happy if some of you will join us. We will work uh, through the online meeting room of Scientix. And uh, so uh, basically the same platform that we are using now. And uh, each time that we work in such, uh, in such way, we learn from each other. We will have a, a common project uh, and uh, uh, different tools because uh, it's open uh, to children from uh, the kindergarten to the secondary school and uh, uh, also open uh, to parents and to teachers. Uh, someone, Paula, says that uh, uh, her pupils use scratchandcode.org at home. Yes, uh, we uh, use two. Uh, Programmare Futuro in Italy is uh, uh, part of uh, our ministry um, projects. And uh, our uh, Italian ambassador for the Code Week, uh, Alessandro Bogliolo, uh, translated uh, with uh, his uh, uh, colleagues, uh, translated into Italian. I know that uh, Italian uh, uh, teachers uh, prefer uh, translated materials. And uh, so you can find uh, uh, the code.org materials uh, uh, in Italian and also in other languages. If you go to the code.org website, uh, you just select the language and uh, you can have uh, uh, in many languages, not all, but many languages. And there are a lot of uh, materials, very good. Uh, you can start uh, from uh, code.org, for instance. There is a very nice, uh, uh, some very nice activities uh, uh, from Frozen uh, that were used for the Hour of Code uh, Week, uh, or uh, others from, uh, uh, I cannot remember the name of uh, the little bird, Angry Birds. Share it. Okay, if some of you would like to join us, uh, feel free to, to write me or to uh, register uh, to the link and we will uh, go on working together. Uh, it will be nice. Uh, I know EV3. Uh, EV3 doesn't work with Scratch yet. I don't uh, think it. Uh, uh, it is possible to make it work in, uh, with Enchanted, but maybe someone like uh, Herman that is here can give us uh, more tips. He is more expert than me in uh, EV3. Uh, uh, personally, I think that EV3 is very, very nice, uh, starting from the uh, junior secondary school, because you can work also with angles, uh, you can work uh, with a gyroscope, uh, we can... Uh, uh, integrate with other things, but it's not very good uh, with uh, little children. Uh, so maybe uh, step by step, uh, you can uh, start with a uh, uh, bot, for instance, then go in to we do, and then uh, uh, Mindstorm or EV3. Uh, Stretch are great. Code uh, uh, Club .org UK. Uh, we will uh, see all the things. Uh, thank you, Anastasia. I, I think that uh, uh, working with educational robotics is the way to, to stay young because uh, uh, I, I learn a lot from uh, children and uh, I understand that uh, I have to uh, think each time uh, to my way of teaching. Uh, when I go, uh, last week I was in the kindergarten and I was asking uh, what is a robot. 
And uh, between many questions and many answers uh, from uh, children, uh, uh, we decided that a robot uh, is a kind of machine that uh, obeys to some orders that you give uh, by programming it. And uh, he said, I always obey to my dad. So I thought, okay, maybe my language uh, is uh, not good for them. And uh, if I'm not able to reach uh, such kind of uh, children, maybe sometimes when I explain uh, uh, mathematics or uh, science in the class, uh, they, they cannot understand me. So uh, uh, educational robotics is a way also to rethink the way in which uh, we are going to teach uh, in the classes, for me at least. Okay, perfect. Thank you, uh, Tulia, very much for this wonderful presentation and very uh, extensive answer, answers for the questions. Uh, let's see if we have any more questions. We will have to finish uh, very soon. Um, now, everybody, thank you very much. So the the most nice part of the of the uh, of the and, uh, for you, it's coming. <laughs> Paula is uh, uh, is uh, inviting us to join it winning. Of course, I forgot to to mention that it winning uh, scientists uh, are working together and uh, also in the classroom lab and. Uh, uh, very good chances uh, to uh, to start working with the robotics for those of you that uh, didn't start it yet. Okay, I don't know if Ben would like to add something uh, at the end also. Uh, no, just a big thank you also for myself yeah, for everybody participating. Some great questions and discussions happening there. Um, just as a piece of information, we will be um, posting the recording of the webinar. On um, the directly on the course, so if you want to revisit something, you can um, have a look there. And um, also, Tulia, I think it's fine to also post there the presentation. Um, so if people want to download that, that um, is also possible. Um, yeah. And so thanks a lot. As so well as and yes, the hosting. Thank you very much. It will be also available on Scientix uh, portal. So and the channel you choose for sure, you will be able to reach this uh, recording. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you, Tulia, one more time, and see you for the next uh, Scientix webinar. Have thank a good you, evening, Julio. everybody. Bye, bye. bye. Thank you, my buddy. Bye bye. Hello, Tulia.